Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our throwback look at the hardware of the HTC Dream, also branded as the T-Mobile G1 here in the United States. This phone was released almost a decade ago and it was the first commercially available Android smartphone back in 2008. The history of this phone is actually quite fascinating. In July of 2005, Google acquired Android INC, a company at the time which was owned by Andy Rubin. And of course, in 2017, there is much hype surrounding the Essential phone, again by Andy Rubin. So we've almost come full circle. Uh, the HTC Dream is also interesting because now, in 2017, we have the uh, Google Pixel series also manufactured by HTC. So in many ways, we have, again, returned to our roots that all started with this device. Hardware-wise, the G1 had this interesting slide-out horizontal keyboard with relatively spacious keys, but also a not-so-ergonomic uh, chin that made typing with your right hand a little difficult because you had to reach all the way over to hit these keys. Still, uh, it offered a pretty nice typing experience since this has a physical layout, although it was a little chunky in terms of its overall form factor and designs. I would say that the first primetime phone with a sleeker and more usable interface would be the HTC Magic or the MyTouch 3G that was the successor to the G1. So this was still meant as more of a early developer, uh, kind of a mod-based phone that uh, community members could pick up for the time. Specifications compared to modern-day flagships are also night and day. It has only a 528 MHz Qualcomm processor based on ARM11, coupled with just 256 megabytes of built-in storage and 192 megabytes of RAM. And that was enough, believe it or not, for a very early build of Android version 1.5, and the phone would eventually get updates to 1.6 down the line. It also had a 1150 milliamp hour capacity battery, a micro SD card slot that could expand the memory up to 16 gigabytes, which was required if you wanted to take images or download more apps, and the capacitive touchscreen display had a size of 3.2 inches with a resolution of 320 by 480. That's HVGA standard for the time with 180 ppi. Other hardware essentials including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS were all on board, uh, although the phone only had 2G connectivity with T-Mobile back in the day, and it is a quad-band GSM phone, so if you get it unlocked, you can use it globally just by popping in your own SIM card to make a phone call. So taking a closer look at the design, here on the top there's access to a earpiece next to an LED status light, which will glow when you get a new notification or when the phone is being charged. I like the fact that it has rounded corners, and to be completely honest, the screen still offers reasonable bezel sizes as we look back on it today, so not too bad. Uh, of course, the screen itself didn't even have multi-touch out of the box, so that uh, required a software update for those functions to work. There was no pinch to zoom on the original browser that this came enabled with. And back in the day, Android also came with a set of requirements for uh, various controls that don't look super clean as far as the aesthetics are concerned, but they give you quick access to power on and off, talk and end keys, a back key, a home key, a menu key, and there was even a five-way navigation toggle by form of a trackball or a trackpad, pretty similar to BlackBerry phones. When HTC and Google released this phone, it was meant as a competitor to Windows Mobile, to iOS, the first iPhone, to the BlackBerry OS, and Symbian, uh, another popular operating system for the time. On the side of the device, you have an HTC logo. There's also a dedicated volume rocker, which is pretty easy to tap on. You can see that the chin protrudes at this angle, kind of similar to the HTC Hero that came out a few years later. Uh, I think that this is actually kind of an interesting design. Uh, as far as ergonomics are concerned, it makes the D-pad and the buttons a little easier to tap on with just one hand. And also, it positions the microphone closer to your mouth when you're talking, uh, as a result, improving the audio quality. The bottom features access to a mini USB based port both for charging and for headphones. Believe it or not, you needed a proprietary adapter from HTC to transform the charging port into a headphone port for listening to music. Pretty similar to the modern iPhones, uh, and that was another critique and a downside for the time. The back itself is made out of the soft touch texture that has surprisingly held up quite well, and there's also a 3.12 megapixel autofocus enabled camera, but no LED flash or vanity mirror next to the loud 
loudspeaker. Behind the battery door, there's access to the user replaceable battery in addition to the micro SD card slot and the full size SIM card slot. So all in all, the design itself uh, was definitely chunky compared to uh, you know even other contemporary phones like Blackberries or the first iPhone. It was quite a bit thicker just because it had this slide out QWERTY keyboard. Uh, but all in all, it did make the phone quite uh, memorable as far as its looks were concerned. So sliding things open, we have access to the pretty spacious QWERTY keyboard. What's good is that the keys are backlit and there's a dedicated row just for numbers that doubles as symbols. And you can see that in the way that the keys are spaced in addition to kind of textured and misaligned is very similar to what you find on a full size uh, computer or on a netbook back in the day. So it made typing a lot more ergonomic feeling. And all in all, it's not a bad keyboard. It might not be quite as good as a Blackberry keyboard, but it was still quite sufficient for sending out some quick text messages or if you were a developer for sending out some quick to, uh, commands without having to connect an accessory for some quick modding and hacking. Uh, part of the action of the slider, which is interesting, and how it slides out using this uh, pop-out method is due to the mechanism on the back, which you can see here has a circular indent, and that's why the motion of the uh, screen as it flips out isn't exactly vertical, but it has a protrusion before going all the way up. Uh, it is spring assisted, which means that it's relatively tactile and responsive and uh, stays in place quite well when you don't have it flipped open. Um, as a whole, the phone itself does feel quite boxy and uh, uh, chunky by 2017 standards. And if we do a quick size comparison here with a modern phone that has a now average 5 inch display next to this phone's then standard 3.2 inch screen, you can see that the difference is quite dramatic. This was the size for an average size phone back in the day, and the iPhone did have a slightly larger screen at 3.5 inches versus 3.2 inches, but you can see the difference in size nonetheless, and of course phones have gotten a lot slimmer, even ones with the built-in keyboards, uh, and so there are quite a few differences that have come and gone. But the overall uh, kind of basics of the interface, including the drag up, drag down notification drawer, time and date settings, access to widgets and the fact that the Android ecosystem was designed to be open source with uh, you know, more and more apps added to the Play Store, stuff like that uh, were all started and rooted with the HTC Dream or the T-Mobile G1. So obviously if you use this phone here in 2017, it remains usable for the core utility apps, stuff like making phone calls, if you want to do some very quick uh, browsing the web for news and weather updates using Wi-Fi, it still works, but uh, for loading up complex sites, for loading up uh, newer apps, it will definitely struggle just because the RAM is very limited and the processor is severely outdated. However, it's nonetheless an iconic smartphone that pioneered the Android ecosystem as we know it today, and of course many similarities can be still found in its original design. So thanks for watching this look back at the hardware of the original Android phone or the HTC Dream, also dubbed the T-Mobile G1 here in the United States.